So, okay, this is old cam. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be talking about this election year and... And why it's the most important election since the first election that we had in our nation's history over 200 years ago. And why does this election year, why is it so much more important than previous years? Because this is the election that will determine whether we remain a democracy as you know it, or we go to a democracy as Great Britain and many countries in Europe have. Even the Russians have mean? the same type of democracy. Well, basically when you have multiple, you have two houses elected. Mm -hmm. The lower house is the house elected by the people because they can be removed every two years. The upper house is basically, even though it's elected by the people, it's more of a special interest house because they, they only, they, the people that are there can only be re, uh, re bounced out every six years. So, uh, and the, what makes it, why that's important is because if it's a parliamentary style system, they, the upper house will decide who will be the next head of the head of state, and because Obama is their head of their party, he would automatically, as in England and the other countries, Papa do a Putin, the heads of their party automatically become the ruler. Oh. Yeah, and that that comes forth because the good founding fathers never thought that there would be anybody like Barack Obama. They never, of course, Chicago didn't exist in those days. I mean, I knew it. I have my values. Cicero. In Cicero, my my family members in Cicero say, you know, they basically gay guys would beat up on their asses from Cicero. See, and if you're wondering, like, well, that would never happen, all you have to do is, well, actually, all you have to do is take a look at New York. Yeah, that where the mayor Bloomberg, they, they, have a, they have a piece of, they have a law in place that prohibits you from serving more, two, more than two terms. He got rid of Giuliani. Giuliani didn't even want to serve the next term. He wanted to stay in office on 9-11 to finish up what was started. And Bloomberg said, we have a law. You're going to obey that law. So, so guess what Bloomberg is the first one to do? Bloomberg, when he came time to leave office, he decided he, he, it was too important that he stay in office. So he stayed in office for another term mm -hmm. and what, fighting it in the court system. And now, as he's getting ready to leave office, because there's been too god awful much of it, you know, you get old when you stay in office too long, it's been big cities. He says, it's a good idea, and he's more than likely going to drop the litigation now to force the next person in to uh, sit there and have to only have two terms. Well, I think about even Russia. Yeah. Um, what was it? Forced shelter? No, no, no. Um, now, why, can I even think of his head? Oh, <laughs> which. Even Russia, Even Russia went, went by two terms. That's right, and Putin, Putin. Couldn't, Putin could not serve, uh, could not serve, uh, succeed himself. So they put Medvedev or whatever his name, I guess. Medvedev. Medvedev. Yeah. yeah Although put, Putin still controls. He still was the head of the party, but they put in his uh, his his, his surrogate man. to be the head, and he actually ran things. And then when they changed the rules so that he could now serve office again. That, see, that's another thing is that uh, um, a lot of parliamentary democracies will change the rules so that a person can serve, succeed himself over and over again. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, it is really important, to, important because, I mean, pure and simple, a lot of Republicans do not like Romney. And when they don't like somebody in the Republican Party, they really won't vote. They'll vote for somebody else. I mean, they'll vote for, a, you know, like their uh, their town election. They'll vote for bond issues, but they will not vote for the, the you know, the Senate, the House, or the presidential Well, campaign. you know, if you look at history over time here in the United States, people come out to vote for a president. They don't typically vote for, a lot of times, unless it's a really hot um, a local issue. They don't even vote for local issues. They don't vote for state issues. No, typically. But um, there's a 96 percent re-election ratio on members of the House and Senate. So, to turn over a House and Senate to another party, you really have to have been really made people unhappy. And like I said, it's because the, if the party that comes out and votes is the party that wins the election, that's all it is. It's not uh, if you get you know the Democrats are good at getting out. X, X people to vote. Republicans are good at getting out family members mm -hmm. and small business people and all of this stuff to vote. You know, if you're a senior citizen, you're more likely, here's a good one, the Democrats scare the hell out of you, but you're more likely to vote for a Republican candidate than you are a Democratic oh. candidate. 
because Democrats want to take everything you have from you, and if you're uh, a senior citizen and have something in your bank account, you don't want that gone. Um, and uh, I mean, like right now, it, it's you know, like they said, well, the, the president of the United States is not running for the office of the presidency. He's he's running to be the head of the country. If you listen carefully, I, I wish you know, I want to serve our country. He's no longer, a lot of his things, he's no longer saying president. You've got to listen to what the man is saying. He has also publicly said about the 216 election, you listen closely, he has said many times, you know, that two terms is not enough. He's not even elected to a second term yet. And he says two terms is not enough. He's also said that, uh, I, you know, 216, they're not even, you know, because Hillary's expected to be the nominee for 216. He has also said very publicly, that um, there is too much that the Re George Bush and Republicans can undo that we have accomplished. Uh -huh. And if I leave office, they, uh, then it can easily be undone. You know, those are the words. I right. know, George Bush is so extremely powerful. And even long after he's been in office. That they're scared, they, you know, they, 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 they're, they're, they're trying to vilify. I mean, uh, the way it works too is uh, all the pollsters, okay, some of these polls, most of the polls, when it comes down to this point, have not been wrong since the Dewey election. And they were only wrong on the Dewey election for one simple thing. It was the first year that telephone polls were done. And guess what, folks? The telephones were in everybody's houses in 1948. So guess what happened? You had skewed election results. Yeah, the people that basically had phones said they were going to overwhelmingly vote for Dewey, which they did do, but the majority of the nation did not have telephones. And those are the people that voted for uh, Harry Truman, which I actually I knew Harry Truman. Harry Truman was a nice guy. He used to play baseball mm. on the field, so I know how nice he was. He was a hell of a bad umpire, <laughs> you know. But well, he did take his glasses off and umpire. He was a nice guy, though. He liked serve lemonade and cookies and stuff. But um, um, but it's it, it, it is a it is a god awful important election, and people they're going to like they're going to use their dislikes for Romney not to come out and vote for House and Senate, which is important. So I mean, but I'm like, no, talking, bad. yeah. But the 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 polls also right now. Like I said, they've never been wrong since the Dewey election. They, all the polls are sight got off a landslide for Romney. Yeah, but do you think that will change after the Republican National Convention? I mean, it hasn't started yet, or the Democratic National Convention. No, this is why, okay, we were coming back from a uh, trade show in Las Vegas where they actually did have a flash flood, even though you may not have actually known about it. Uh, we were watching television, and there is there's some major news personalities being interviewed and talking about the polls, and they got one of the well, there's a reason why the polls are all aiming directly for Romney, because it goes back to Bill Clinton and what Bill Clinton said. George Bush actually the economy was roaring for 14 months before the election, but Bush basically took his foot and put it in his mouth and couldn't explain the economy was actually good. So what did uh, how did uh, Bill Clinton win the election. He was not supposed to win. He was just supposed to. What happens is in, dem in political parties, uh, you put somebody in there that's like a placeholder. We just need somebody that's going to give a good run, and the next year, we, next time, you can become president. Mm -hmm. So, but he, Bill Clinton and Dick Morris created the most famous saying in the United States politics, which yeah, is. Yeah, and Dick Morris. Yeah, Dick Morris wrote it for Bill Clinton to say. What? And, you know, what was it that Bill Clinton basically harped on for the entire summer of the election, even though he knew the economy was better? I don't know. What did he? Is the economy stupid? Oh, that it was him that did that? That was Dick Morris that wrote that oh. for Bill Clinton. Is the economy stupid? And if you run, okay, the Democrats are telling you we're going to have higher unemployment because the Republicans won't allow us to spend more money. And money, you know, hiring. Public sector workers is what keeps the economy running, not hiring private sector workers, because the private sector is doing good, the public sector is doing bad. Mm -hmm. You know, so you want to you want to spend more money you don't really have, and uh, look at look at all the countries in Europe, all of them one by one, it's like dominoes are starting to go down because of all of the public sector money that's owed. Um, but um, that's true. Yeah, but she, I mean, well, we. It's just like, it's an election for the future. I mean, the way it works is in a democracy, you can basically decide, you vote a democracy in, you can vote a democracy out. Rome did not fall because Rome 
Um, it was a gradual slide. It was a gradual slide as the people decided they didn't like the, they didn't like the democracy they had, so they started moving more and more towards a dictatorship. Yeah. That you know, because the word dictator never met as it is today. The, Julius Caesar was a great first dictator. Mm -hmm. He was an elected dictator, and he tried to do what the people wanted, which got him killed. So what happens over the span of time, dictators started doing what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. They lived longer. They all still got killed, but they'd all live longer. I mean, you know, you want to be a dictator and be killed, you know, the first month, or do you want to be a dictator and be killed five years down the line? Uh -huh. They take the five years down the line. But um, but we're moving more towards that. We're moving more towards a parliamentary a parliamentary government, in which one person will basically make all the rules. He'll basically uh, Obama is already showing you that because he's doing everything by executive decision, which is illegal. Well, and everything there, he's doing is there's, illegal. There's a lot of you going. Well, wait a minute. We still have two houses of Congress. We have an elected official. All this is elected. Yes, but like you said, they're ignoring the Constitution. They're ignoring the laws, and they're doing what they feel like doing. Our constitution, our, our constitution says the House, the Senate must have a budget. They have not had a budget approved in the Senate since Obama became president. Mm -hmm. They're in violation of that. The President of the United States has decided on his own to change immigration laws in violation of congressional rights. He has decided to change the welfare laws in violation of congressional law. He has taken money from one part of government and given it to another part of government, bankrupting a system that basically was created by the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. and he, he, they, they have a total, as long as you control the Senate of the United States, you can do any damn thing you want to in this country. Ooh. That's all that counts. So guess what happens? That's why this election year is more and more important for the Senate than yeah. for the President. And like I said, if you hate Romney, which a lot of Republicans do, okay, the whole thing is the Republicans never cared whether Ron. Okay, the only reason that they put Ryan in is because they knew Ron, they actually could win this election. All of a sudden, it became a Bill Clinton moment when the Democrats realized uh, they don't know the economy. The economy has been on a roll for 14 months because people weren't feeling it in their pocketbooks. This, you know, so um, they decided, oh, God, we got to do something to get Romney mm -hmm. out of there. So what they did? Oh, you they, mean Bush? No, the, this no. Uh, this is what they did. Really oh, now, with um, with this election, Republicans basically forced. Uh, Ryan on Romney because they actually can win the election. They weren't going to win the election with Romney because nobody likes Romney. I mean, I, I saw a thing today in the newspaper, the Romney that people know personally and the Romney you see are two totally different people. I mean, it's just like, um, uh, we'll go use an analogy. Uh, Timothy Dalton is stiff, st the most stiff James Bond you've ever seen in your life, and the guy in person is Basically, he makes Pat Boone and, and Leslie Nielsen look like they're little tiny school kids. Mm -hmm. He loves to have a good time. He's got a lot. Of, he's got a big sense of humor, all of this. But when he gets in front of a camera, he becomes stiff. Romney, when Romney gets in front of a camera, Romney can get the same clothes that Ryan has picked up from that, that Ryan goes to buy at Walmart, mm -hmm. and they look horrible on Romney. My, on uh, on Ryan, they look like his everyday wear. Romney doesn't understand, you know, uh, we have Ryan, this is what you see Ryan doing. Uh, if you saw, you know, if you saw uh, anybody even coming at, at Romney, this is oh. what you'd get. No, he's got like a $500 hairstyle, folks. And he has that one, he's got that Jack Lord thing, you know, so it blows in the wind. But he does not look like he is any, he does not look like us. Hmm. And that is his biggest problem. They don't care if you're wealthy. Everybody that runs for president is wealthy, for Christ. How else are you going to get there? <laughs> I mean, there's no such thing as a poor, okay, um, they say, well, Harry Truman was poor. Harry Truman owned a god awful huge amount of property. Jimmy Carter was poor. Well, Jimmy Carter owned a great big peanut farm. Well, uh, Bill Clinton was poor. Bill Clinton had already made his money, folks, and his wife had money. They say, well, Barack Obama, Barack Obama was a millionaire before he ever ran for this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you also toss in the amount of property you own, and Barack Obama owned a great big expensive place of, in Chicago that he got for next to nothing. Hmm, I wonder how that happened. Yeah, uh, well, th what some of those people that you're not supposed to talk about in the mainstream press made a deal, I think mm -hmm. so. But um, 
is his a god awful important election and nobody's paying it. A lot of people just don't pay any attention. They're only listening to the sound bites. This is the thing is, everybody, I hate negative advertisement. I want them to stop negative advertisement. It's the people that do the best on the negative advertisement that win the election, not the guys that say, you know, I'm going to put everybody back to work. You're going to have a chicken in every pot and a car in every house. And, and you know, it's all going to be free. That, that doesn't somebody be, pays for it. Somebody, that doesn't, they, don't pay, they don't pay any attention to that. Where the guy said, well, yeah, we know how he's going to do it. He's going to sit there and play Robin Hood. He's going to take everything you have from you and, uh, and give it to somebody, you know, give it to other people and then make you pay, pay for all of that and that, you know, and, and, well, no, it's, they're basically doing a negative on the thing. Negative ads always work. Positive ads seldom ever work during an election year. And the negative ads... But wouldn't you say that that's what got Barack Obama elected was his positive ads? No, he, he, Barack Obama basically, he got elected for one purpose and one purpose only, one reason. He chased Hillary Clinton out of the campaign with the racist stuff. They did. They were playing Chicago politics. The, the so-called positive ads always had a, 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 an underlayment of negativity. You know, well, we know that George Bush and the Republicans, that, uh, that we want hope and change. We, we know that George Bush and the Republicans will do this to you if you re-elect George Bush and the Republicans. They're running, they're running against George Bush and the Republicans and the wealthy in this nation. It's all negative. They, they ran against George Bush and the Republicans and, and the fact that, you don't, you know, if you don't elect me, you're going to be racist. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have been called racist by everybody in the sun. I hate to tell you this, but our Attorney General says if you're a minority, you can't be racist. See, blonde hair, blue-green eyes. Mm -hmm. my, my mommy and my grandparents are American Indians. I have Indians on both sides of my family. Mm -hmm. And she's Asian and she's racist. Of course. That's right. <laughs> you know, but. Um, we, we do, you know, come out and vote, because if you don't vote, it means you're basically deciding to become a, a parliamentary democracy rather than the democracy that we currently have. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. you, you have, that's the one thing you do have available. Remember, parliamentary democracies censor God off everything. You cannot do this show in a parliamentary democracy. It's against the law. It's and they're all going, but it's a democracy. It's, it's a democracy defined by the government. <laughs> and a government never defined Which might democracy. as well be a dictatorship. Which is what most parliamentary democracies always end up in. Mm. So It's how my family got, we put it this way, it's how my family got its, its uh, lordship in England because they supported the, the uh, right side. They supported the right side, you know. That's uh, good, since they Nolan, supported the wrong side yeah, of the other one. Nolan Cromwell was such a horse's ass that they supported the monarchy and then they managed to get a, they got a thing out of it. So I guess though, we're going to be talking more about this over the next two months. The, 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 the uh, Republican National Convention starts tomorrow, so until next time, this is okay. And this is not a spring chip. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For more information, you can go to www.montybubbles.net on the net or our new main meet news site, which is MBN. Uh, newsvideoweb.com. That's okay. where the newer stuff puts on on a daily basis. Yeah, the montybubbles.net is our archives and anything that's longer in content. Yeah, because there is no, you can't put long content material on the new website. It's not designed for it. It's meant to be done real quick and up. So wherever you're watching us, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D. And thank you once again for over 250 million links on the internet. And of course, come like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, at Monty Bubbles.